I've taken on um, sort of a repair uh, restoration of uh, a Sieg uh, X3 or SX3 milling machine and the error was in the saddle here which the screw here had been let's say uh, flawed so that there was a quite a bump here the reason for the well defect here was that it's been over tightened here and i think um, it is better to use two screws into the one big gear at least i would do that so i had to scrape down here and that's now been fixed i'm in the later stages uh, also proven that it's flat to the above here but not really covering so much as it should be the um, piece here will fit like this to the head with taper pins uh, and slots machined in and put in here this again mounts to Set axis has uh, put on here. Uh, we'll measure with the head and uh, the saddle on here, of course, to verify that everything is, is correct afterwards. So for now, I'll just um, use some time to scrape the saddle here. I don't want to pass with the biax this way, so I'll do it this way. I've um, rough scraped it with the hand scraper, but I've f such small and narrow uh, fields. Uh, it's much better to use um, the biax. I feel setting it at fourth stroke or adapting that to, of course, the te the technique and um, uh, to whichever stage you're in, and then of course the um, curvature of a blade and also speed. So let's go. Taking it uh, nice and easy, really. A little bit of chicken scratching, exactly. But I find the cast iron, uh, cast iron, quite okay to to work with. Also, um, better than anticipated, really. And of course, the normal bluing up. Yes, here is, by the way, the gib, which is in the middle so I'll take that afterwards it's beginning to get good contact so uh, Not too shabby after I think around 10 strokes, but still way to go. Shallow along the edge here, or maybe I've, well, yeah, there at least. Um, <clears throat> the um, kib was a little bit bent, high in the middle. So that's what I'm trying to rectify here. 
uh, namely to bend it down a little bit. That's why I also have the dial there to see how much I'm bending down. Take it uh, slow and easy there too. Hopefully ending up with a flatter gib. And the first thing uh, we saw was uh, what I said may be no scraping marks but grinding marks but anyway for oil deposits okay enough I guess now it doesn't it's not no longer high in the middle and then <coughs> the spindle measurements we can do locked up quill here and measure the outer roundness both in the taper and here with the test bar and also then how the spindle then is uh, let's say situated uh, with the axis here in that plane and in that plane. First of all, I have a test bar. Measure here. Or in the center. There. Okay. Zero and then roundness. It's a couple of hundreds out there, it's not bad. Same. The Y is it higher here than here? That means it's pointing inwards, which it should be really. Then we can see, lock it up. Then we can also try to to move the whole assembly. So I also think is is good. And as you can see. Moving out here, the pressure on the needle drops. That means that the, the spindle is pointing downwards. I mean, this would be the other way. So that is correct because then if you have a 90 degree um, table here, and you put the work piece in between and the workload this will force this apart raising the spindle so now we have a little bit inwards pressure so that this um, counteracts that not much but a little bit so
so I'd say it's uh, it's quite okay in that direction. And then we can see the other way. And then from above. So it points a little bit that way. And what does that mean? If I lock the spindle also, is it the same? Yes. Hmm. Uh, <clears throat> the X3 head here points to that direction. So if I slide it down here and up, there's a deviation on this length, which is, um, let's say, um, five inches of around 15 hundreds of a millimeter so 15 or 150 millimeters and then 15 hundreds so that's one hundreds per 10 millimeter so that's um, a bit too much the reason it um, is so much off is uh, not because of the system down here, the saddle, and that drives uh, perfectly true, but it's the head location. So the head is uh, located on these two double pins, taper pins, which uh, I'm not sure if can be adjusted. They are uh, permanently fixed to the head, it seems, and then just crudely machined uh, to um, matching holes down here. Uh, so hopefully they can be this can be adjusted otherwise i have to figure out either take off that pin and just lock it through the screws and then tighten it down or actually scrape up this side which i don't really like because that's the foundation so i like to have the base in order so we'll see and the method they use for alignment and uh Look at it from the point of view of these taper pins here. The plate sits here. And then you have the gib there, of course. This side all clamping down. But at least the taper pins take care of the location. And if, uh, if the spindle is now pointing to the left, as I said, from the front, it uh, can be corrected by scraping down here. But uh, so I just try to also state that uh, I would say that the column and uh, this will then represent, let's say, a more uh, more of a foundation, and then this is the top floor. So that I would rather adjust the top floor than the foundation. The foundation should be accurate. So when we found this to be accurate to this, and then uh, I would rather modify the head that would mean to find another or maybe to discard this maybe to take them a little bit out and then reset maybe take them out permanently just screw in here and uh, and the tighten and then insert so that they, uh, the head can't move. Not sure how they did it, but maybe that is uh, at least that's what I would do. Um, the alignment that they have produced between the plate here and the head is not correct. 
And uh, if you look at those pins, uh, they're uh, hand uh, ground. I mean, you can see that uh, quite vividly. If you look here, they are not in line by any means. They're somewhat crudely made. But again, as I told uh, to the owner, this mill is, uh, let's say it sells for 25K, 30K in Norway. Probably the manufacturer somewhere between five and 10K, closer to five, I guess, would be the production price. And what can you expect? I mean, how good materials, what, uh, I mean, it, it's, it's, it's actually quite uh, surprising that they can make it to, to such a low price. It's uh, quite a feat in itself to be able to produce this kind of hardware for uh, yeah, just a few thousand kron. And uh, it's not a, I'm not really surprised that they haven't put more effort than into testing, which I mean, it would probably double the price or triple the price if you did a, did this more. Anyway, uh, I have no idea how the procedure here is supposed to be, but I took out the ta taper pins, uh, adjusted till I have the best results on on the um, test bar here and uh, tightened it real hard and then inserted the pins again and i saw that it had they adjusted the uh, position a little bit and i got it down to 500s four 500s instead of 15. that's the best i can do so um, on that length there it's 500s that's the best